today I want to showcase how you can install your original insights when you have them into your external mind using a real life example that I had. And to be honest, I'm going to be showcasing the analog component of my external mind because I have been tending more and more towards the analog side versus the digital, which I promise I will go into more detail about in the future. There's just a few things that I want to play around with a bit more to make sure that they are sustainable in the long term because that is the key. We want a system that we can use sustainably for years and decades to come. Rather than starting with a piece of content that you consume and turning that into notes, how can you take your original ideas that you have, your insights, and then install them within the system? Because that I think is the ultimate goal is to create our own thinking and advance our own thinking on a topic rather than just always copying and reformulating the thoughts that other people have. So the insight came when I was doing my daily meditation practice. I use the waking up app with Sam Harris and he intersperses meta loving kindness practice where you are essentially wishing someone well, you're, you're often repeating, may you be happy, may you be free from suffering. And it was this sentence, this may you be free from suffering that triggered some insight, some connection to other things that I had in my mind that I wanted to, to capture. So the, the first thing that I thought about was a, a line from Viktor Frankl's book, Man's Search for Meaning, where in some ways suffering ceases to be suffering at the moment it finds meaning. So what I was thinking about there is, is someone going through hardship, through adversity, really want you want to stop people from having uh, when you're doing this loving kindness practice? Or is it the suffering that has no meaning that you want them to, to avoid? And then that also triggered another thought to something that I, that I had, which was around happiness being uh, because of rather than in spite of adversity. And I was reminded of the quote from Seneca that no man is more unhappy than he who never faces adversity, for he is not permitted to prove himself. So I thought about how when I'm doing this meta practice, and oftentimes I'm, you know, imagining my my daughter as the object of this practice, you know, I, I want her to to be happy, to be free from suffering. But what is it that I actually mean when I am when I'm talking about that? And that was the insight that I wanted to capture. So the first thing that I needed to do was I wrote cards for all of these kind of building block, the foundational ideas that came from elsewhere so that I could have this framework for adding in my own thought, which was that loving kindness doesn't necessarily mean that practice that you are wanting them to be free from adversity. You can still wish someone well while hoping that they will face hardships in life, but you just don't want them to face hardships without having that be meaningful in some way or, or providing some meaning to them. So there's a there's a difference between wishing wellness in the short term versus the long term. So in terms of loving kindness, wishing that the object be free from suffering is not a hope that they will face no hardship, but rather that the trials they encounter will have some meaning. And then this is where I reference back to that quote from Viktor Frankl by putting the uh, card number index here because that is a path to sustained versus fleeting happiness, which I referred back to the card from Seneca about facing adversity and proving yourself. And then I installed all those cards in my in my system. I put this card here right behind 2.2.1a, the card that I had for the loving kindness practice because when I'm, I was thinking about where do I want to encounter this idea again and it was if I was looking up this meta practice, this loving kindness practice, I'd want to know a little bit more about what exactly is it I'm thinking when I'm, when I'm doing this, this practice. So that's why I put it there rather than behind the other two cards, but I can refer back to them using the uh, card indexes 
right here. So that is how you can install your own thoughts into your external mind, into an analog uh, Zettelkasten system. I think this is the key that that we need with these systems is to be able to capture, advance, and um, really flesh out our own thinking, our own insights. That's gonna be the most rewarding and meaningful for us in our systems. So that is it for this video. Let me know if you found anything useful or any comments down in the uh, comments box below, and I will see you all next time.